The rich diversity of organisms associated with coral reefs begins at the microscopic scale within the coral animal. The coral colony is a symbiotic community comprised of all three domains of life called the coral holobiont. This relationship is essential to building and maintaining coral reefs. Each coral colony is comprised of small, individual animals called pulps. A coral pulp is radial symmetric and classified along with jellyfish and sea anemones in the phylum Cnidaria. This phylum is characterized by stinging cells called nematocysts. Nematocysts are specialized cells that contain a thread-like barb that discharge and deliver a toxin for defense and prey capture. Each pulp is surrounded with tentacles equipped with nematocyst cells. By extending their tentacles, corals are able to trap plankton in the water column. The trapped particles are then transported to the mouth by the cilia at the coral tissue surface. This is one of several methods for corals to gain energy in the form of organic carbon and nutrients such as phosphate and nitrogen. The release of mucus along the coral surface is another strategy to gain additional energy and nutrients. The exuded mucus traps microbes in the water column that are then drawn into the coral pulp to be digested. Another method which the coral gains the majority of its energy is from a single-celled algae called zooxanthellae that reside within the coral's tissue. The coral animal and its algal inhabitant are codependent. Zooxanthellae residing within the coral tissue use nutrients, primarily nitrogen, made available by the coral. In return, the coral gains energy-rich organic carbon created by the zooxanthellae through photosynthesis. This energy from the organic carbon is important for the production of the limestone coral skeleton. The loss of this algal inhabitant, known as coral bleaching, can be lethal to the coral animal. One proposed strategy to increase survival during coral bleaching events is to gain nutrients and carbon through alternative sources. Filamentous green algae, known as endolithic algae, live below the coral's tissue in the skeletal carbonate. The coral endolithic algae symbiose may be mutualistic, where the coral provides the endolithic algae with protection against predators and ultraviolet radiation. In return, carbon is translocated by the endolithic algae to the coral. Studies show that the endolithic production increases dramatically in compensation of the lost zooxanthellae during coral bleaching and may be a critical factor for survival until zooxanthellae populations are restored. Investigators also suggest, similar to endolithic algae, that the presence of photosynthetic prokaryotes, known as cyanobacteria, is an important source for organic nitrogen during coral bleaching. Cyanobacteria living in coral tissue may also serve as a vital component to the coral's nitrogen budget. Coral often live in nitrogen-poor water. The nitrogen fixation capabilities of cyanobacteria may be an important supplemental source by making inorganic nitrogen accessible. Corals also form strict associations with other bacteria and archaea. These microbes live on the boundary layer between the mucus of the coral host and the surrounding reef water. Rich in carbohydrates, the coral mucus is believed to act as a source of energy for the microbes. These microbial communities are found to be specific between different corals both in time and space. For example, the Caribbean corals Diploria strigosa, Parides parides, and Manastria franksi have distinct microbial communities that are maintained when the corals are separated in distances as little as 10 centimeters. The benefits that the coral host receives from these microbes remain speculative. Several roles have been proposed. Microbes might protect the coral for invasive pathogens by filling entry niches and or the production of antibiotics. In addition, scientists suggest that corals may feed on some bacteria. Analogous to mucus netting, the coral host feeds on these resident bacteria to gain nutrients and organic carbon. Thus, corals possibly gain additional nutrients in the form of fixed nitrogen, iron, and phosphate. In addition, the coral is able to regain the fixed carbon assimilated by the bacteria during digestion. Dense populations of unique bacteria have been observed dispersed on the coral surface. Investigators suggest that corals farm bacteria by harvesting these large aggregates. Recent use of electron microscopy has also shown that diatoms are living on the surface of corals. These images are the only evidence of their presence. Diatoms are unicellular organisms that have chloroplasts that enable them to photosynthesize. However, the coral diatom interaction is a big unknown. The presence of other organisms, such as endolithic fungi, has also been observed. Their role, if any, remains to be studied. The coral holobiont is a precariously balanced system with unique strategies to gain energy and nutrients. 
Continuing to find the functional roles between members of the coral hall line is critical. Investigations are slowly revealing how disrupting the coral microbe relationship can cause coral mortality. For instance, increased dissolved organic carbon, DOC, in the water column can directly kill corals by overstimulating growth of coral mucus associated microbes. Increased water temperatures and ultraviolet exposure associated with solar irradiance causes zooxanthellae to be expelled. Certain environmental factors, still speculative, may cause some endolithic algae to bioerode the coral. A better understanding of these factors is important for the advancement of coral reef ecology and its conservation.